You boys be quiet down there! Today we're looking at NGH-007, Alpha Mission 2, also known as ASO-2, Last Guardian in Japan. What does ASO stand for, you ask? Armored Scrum Object. What is Scrum? Never mind, question and answer time is over. Before we can talk about Alpha Mission 2, we need to go back to the beginning. ASO was released in arcades in 1985 by SNK. The game's armor system, in which eight different power-ups could be collected and then deployed on demand, was unique for the time and added a lot of strategy to the game. There are a variety of power-ups. These W's will allow you to skip ahead in the stage, and there are R's which will actually set you back. Expert players use these R's to prolong the stage and grind for points. Here's a beginner's trick I used to play it safe. Save up your energy, but don't activate the power-up until you reach the boss or mini-boss. The telephone ringing sound of the game compelling you to spend the energy is tough to ignore, but it's worth it for a shield or extra power to defeat a boss quickly when you don't know what you're doing. The bosses will take all of your skill regardless. Annoyingly, the enemies buzz around you in formation like crazy. It's still normal for enemies and shooters to do this, but back in the day it was all too common. The enemy movements here can become a little dull and aggravating. Another bother is that bosses begin flashing like crazy as if they're about to die when you still have plenty of hits to go. Like other shooters of this era, when you die you will be sent back. It is quite a difficult game. There are 6 stages and 2 laps, for a total of 12 stages in the game. The music is simple FM sound, and the game's two main droning BGM tracks can start to be grating, but that's normal for this era. The music will stick with you after turning the game off, but not really in a good way. SNK ported Alpha Mission to the Famicom in 1986. The NES version of Alpha Mission is actually an entirely different game from the arcade that happens to use the same enemy designs and power-ups, and not in a bad way. It is generally easier. One reason is that you can hold on to your armor power-ups longer, as long as you keep collecting E icons, which replenish your armor energy. The new pause menu where you can pick which armor to equip is also a welcome addition, as it gives you time to consider and strategize. Here's a trick for the NES version. To continue, on the game over screen, press A, B, up, down, B, A, right, left, really fast. There, I just saved you the trouble of looking this up online. Now the next time you pull out the NES for a serious alpha mission sesh, you can just play this video and scan through it looking for the part where I mentioned the code. Where's that alpha mission code Neo Alec told me about again? Fast forward 6 years after the release of the original game and now we get to the main course. Alpha Mission 2 was released in 1991 by SNK for the Neo Geo. It was the first shooter released on the platform, beating Ghost Pilots by a few months. For this review, I am playing the game on my MVS cart. As you can see, over the years my cart has taken some damage. For whatever reason, the plastic of this cart seems a bit more brittle than my other games. This piece actually snapped off inside of my system at one point, so it had to be glued back on. I can't recall if this other piece was missing when I bought the game, or if I lost it somehow at some point. Regardless, this type of damage is common to MVS carts, so you'll want to protect your carts by storing them well. This game is also one of many that I got from the same seller on Yahoo Japan auctions over a decade ago. The seller used to make color photocopies of all the art and extras when they weren't included with the cart. It's true that these are worthless, but it's a nice gesture all the same. I have my share of real MVS art sets, but also a ton of these photocopied materials from the Yahoo Japan auctions. Being a little newer than the games I've reviewed so far, this is the first game I've shown that has an in-game difficulty select in the home version. This is really nice to have, especially in a game as difficult as this one. 
As for the other games I've reviewed so far, you're stuck with one difficulty level, unless you have a Unibios or Debug BIOS installed in your system. Also, unlike the original game, Alpha Mission 2 features two-player simultaneous play. This is always nice to have for enjoying the game with a friend, but you'll probably need to play one player if you want to focus on playing well. As in the original game, you can collect an S for a speed boost, L to increase the power of your laser or your standard shot, and M for missiles. There are also G's everywhere, which are your money for buying extra armor upgrades between areas. Shooting the power-up cycles them between these different types, so if you're patient, you get your pick. The problem is, these power-ups tend to appear while the screen is busy with enemies in the later stages of the game, so it can be difficult to focus on leveling up. You're able to fully power up your ship within the first moments of the game, so as long as you can stay alive, you don't need to worry about powering up. Good luck with that. The game knows when you've collected too many S's and your ship is moving too fast, because it will immediately start giving you backwards items, which level down your power-ups. You can use the backwards S to drop back down to normal speed. Like in the classic shooter Xevious, there are both ground and air enemies to deal with. However, this game is not a mere Xevious clone. You have your missile shot for the ground enemies, and your standard shot for the air enemies. Both types of shots must be upgraded, because there are a lot of enemies, including bosses, that can only be damaged with the missiles. The game gives you two control options, Type A where the missiles and standard shot are fired with the same button, and Type B where there are separate buttons. You'll play through six stages, plus a final boss area at the end. The stages are lengthy, it will take you about 50 minutes to get through the entire game, depending on how well you do. The graphics range from good to great for their time. Area 3 looks like it should have had multiple layers or parallax scrolling in the background, but it doesn't. However, just when you think the game has failed in that department, Area 4 changes things up and delivers exactly this. The soundtrack in Alpha Mission 2 is, in a word, great. It ranges from catchy tunes, to more atmospheric sounds that were ahead of their time. What? Who doesn't love do 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 do? I love this area too music because the drum samples are so hardcore. Imagine what people must have thought in 1991 when they heard a game doing this. Games can't do that. Not allowed. Check out this music in Area 5 though. It's way too happy for the massacre that's being inflicted upon the player's fleet. A prototype version of the game was made public by community member Neo Turf Master in 2011. This version has some tunes that were cut from the final version. It's missing a lot of music from the final game, and enemies and power-ups are arranged differently. I'd like to send a huge thank you to Neo Turfmaster for sharing his find with the world. Being an early title, Alpha Mission 2 was relatively inexpensive for the system. I said relatively. Because it was one of the better early games available, a lot of people had it and came to love it. In the later days of the system, new old stock cartridges were easy to come by. Nowadays, like everything else, the price is getting up there, and the MVS version has always been more expensive than the home version. The CD version is still reasonably priced, however. Now let's take a look at the Neo Geo CD version. Please excuse the wait. The single speed disc system can be a little slow but I'm showing you the actual experience of booting up the CD version of this game. As usual, for a game of this age, no arranged soundtrack, and you get that echo effect that I guess is supposed to slightly enhance the music. Well, let's start this game up.
After this initial load screen, the game will never need to load again. So overall, the CD experience is not bad at all when compared with the cartridge. The only real difference is that you get unlimited continues in the CD version, so you can just credit feed your way through the game. But this difference is normal in most Neo Geo cartridge to CD conversions. At an early stage in the system's life, Alpha Mission 2 showcased the Neo Geo's muscle as a platform for shooters. In the first shooter outing, SNK really didn't pull any punches. The game is tough as nails, but it's a beauty to behold, and for a 1991 release, the whole presentation is top notch. If you're a shooter fan craving a real challenge, you can't go wrong with Alpha Mission 2. Thank you for watching another Neo Geo review. Next week we'll be talking about an unreleased game, NGH008, Sunshine, aka Block Paradise from ADK. We're going to take a look at what could have been, and my video will also be the world premiere of a previously unknown fact about this unreleased game. I promise, you're not going to want to miss it, so don't forget to subscribe to Basement Brothers and leave your comments below.